Well, I hope you like hearing more about my story, even if you don't know me, and maybe it's the first video that you're watching from me. Know that everything that I do, I do it with a lot of intention behind it. I don't do it just because of the clothes. I do it because it's my own story. This is gonna be a story about me. And I'm not good at sharing so much of my private, I would say, bubble. But I think what I've got to realize with this confinement and quarantine is that maybe you need to know more <laughs> where I'm coming from with all that fashion, styling and all those tips and why it definitely changed and transformed my life for the best. But it had to go through the bad part first. So. Today is gonna be the good, the bad, and the ugly, as you can see on the title, and where I am now, and why I'm so, so passionate about what I'm doing, because I think it's much more about the style, like I say all the time. Hello, people, welcome back to my channel. Salut les amis, bienvenue et bon retour sur ma chaîne. Hola, bienvenue tout à à mi canal. Konnichiwa, watashi no channel ni yokoso. I hope you're doing fine today. This is another day, another week, and another video of me. And the title says a lot about what I'm gonna share with you today. Not to take any type of pity on me or anything like that, but I'm sharing more because I think at some point people need to know and I know some people are going through it and have their own demons. And if you have a similar story, please let me know down below. It's not easy. It's not easy. Of course, there's a couple of things that I'm probably not gonna be able to say in details because I think it's still pretty hard for me. <laughs> I used to spend a ton. I used to spend a lot of money. Being a shopaholic back then was for me a way to kind of stop whatever I was feeling inside, you know what I mean? Which is like an addiction. It's an addiction. It's not a drug. It's not the alcohol. It's not the pill. It's not. It's nothing that people could say it's dangerous. Again, it's something that a lot of people could called being superficial and nothing more than that. Some people don't even try to go deeper when it comes to whatever is going on behind that, that kind of addiction and how I turn my own shopping addiction to a tool that actually helped me a lot to heal and to actually learn more about myself and how I can help other people going through the same or having the same path that I used to have. I felt entitled to shop that much. It was a need because for me it was normal. And I have my own family story, my own family drama story it affected me and impacted me in a, such a deeper way where I kind of stepped back from human beings altogether and having a human connection was probably the most terrifying thing to me. Having healthy relationships with guys was non-existent and it's still hard up until today and before even the shopping addiction I was young, really, really young, and I went through something traumatic that I'm probably not necessarily good and able to say more, and when I'm gonna be ready to share all of that, I will, don't worry about it, but right about now, I think it's important to see how it affected me, how it impacted me, but just know that it's not something that is easy to go through and when you're young you don't understand you know what I mean you don't understand what's happening to you and when you don't even talk about it you kind of have your own shame your own guilt when you grow up and you understand a lot more than when you were young because when you're young you didn't know and everything that happens it's something you can't say it's bad or good, it's just something that you live and something that you go through and it's throughout the life that you understand that it can actually impact you even more. And I couldn't understand why I felt that fear. What I knew back then is that in order for me to express what I really was feeling was to buy things. And on top of that, I had a wonderful dad for many years, many, many years. I was literally the daughter that was spoiled, if that makes sense. And I can lie, I literally had everything that I wanted back then, everything. Like literally everything. I could just ask and I would get it. And before even getting to that part where I would, I 
had everything that I wanted, we went through a lot of things. My whole family, me included, we went through a lot a lot and seeing my own parents build everything from the ground up taught me a lot of things a lot of things that even in business you kind of see things happening a certain way but i saw it happening in front of my eyes so i had my dad being an entrepreneur to the core is he was born that way literally and he's not a perfect dad but he has those skills so i kind of it wanted a lot of that in him but again I had my own part where I love to go deeper in things rather to have like the money the numbers I want to go beyond it and probably because of my own traumatic ex experiences I wanted to go even deeper and understand what was going on with me because of all those relationships and all those distances that I kept a lot with people in general and me I arrived here in Canada because I used to live in Cameroon in France and then I came here so I lived in multiple places so that was it but right when I came here I had the biggest fight ever with my dad and that destroyed a lot of me when it comes to my own self-esteem got a divorce my dad and my mom and I think there's a lot of people going through that as well but on top of everything that I was experiencing on top of everything that I went through being younger not being able to share whatever i went through when i had that age was even more so something that killed me in a way when i got into that fight with my dad right when my shopping addiction just like got to the next level because i used to shop a lot before it was a desperate cry for help and turning to shopping for me was a way of relieve myself was a way to kind of relieve that pain that I had I didn't say that I was sad I said that I was bored if you went through that you're probably gonna feel that type of way you feel bored you feel like everything is boring like I can do this because it's too boring or you do something for a couple of uh, months and then you stop because well it's too boring no it was not too boring it was just me getting to a level where I could connect with people and then I would just step back because it was way too painful and way too scary for me and I could smile but it was not fun because I spent a lot of many years trying to understand what was wrong with me why I was that way where I couldn't connect with people in that way or when I connected with people at some point I just would step back and turning to shopping again here was for me it was safe it was really safe and if you're a shopaholic you probably feel that type of way and that's why i always say it's a lot deeper than just buying things being a shopaholic or not being a shopaholic and being really scared to invest in yourself or being scared to kind of help yourself in a way where your mind is everything before starting everything in your business in your life in general and that's why for me everything is linked when you have that kind of pain in a certain area of your life it's gonna show up in every other area but the shopping had nothing to do with what happened back then sabotage a lot of relationships with guys where i could have a great guy in front of me but i was me the only thing that i could say when it came to get closer to a guy was for me to say you know yeah i get bored after a while i just get bored so i would just stop it so it's either i would just stay alone by myself or i would be with a guy for a certain while and then everything would just go sideways go back to yourself and ask the tough questions for yourself that's what i did please hang in there because it's not easy for me so i'm just saying it the way it is right now the addiction here got really bad and the less i had money actually the more i would shop you know what i mean and that's when for the first time i realized that it just got worse again there was a link here there was a big link associated to me turning to shopping to kind of get rid of any type of pain any type of feeling so emotions for me i never learned how to say i love you i never never learned i had wonderful parents my dad was not a perfect man but again i think when it comes to him he learned the hard way what is it to not 
don't have affection or not growing up with affection I realized that I didn't want to end up being like him and uh, getting a divorce was the biggest fear ever and I got really really much more like sensitive right now but it was painful I, I was scared I felt alone you know what I mean and feeling alone it turns again to the shopping addiction here and it's hard because there were so many things that I wanted to say to my dad and up until today I'm still so scared to say it because I feel like it just doesn't care you know it turned me into being somebody that would not show a lot of emotions I would smile I would love to have everybody being good whatever they were around me but at the same time I kind of stepped away because I didn't want to show up too much emotion because I turned to the shopping for it when I understood that that shopping addiction was something that destroyed me that's where I decided to take back the control that's where I decided and I was like you know what if shopping like I did turned me being in so many deep problems I could use the same tool to heal myself it's not to say that yes I decided to be minimalistic I don't think I will never ever be minimalistic to be honest like I'm not even gonna lie to set intention when you buy whenever you thinking about adding up to your closet ask the right questions why why did I need it and where does that high come from because being a shopaholic you're gonna have highs when you shop you're gonna have highs when you buy something and a couple of hours later you're gonna go back to being really down on the tough part which was to stop distracting myself from shopping and turn to something that i really wanted to do and weirdly enough turning to help other women understand the deeper issues because i went through it was a medicine for me it was a therapy for myself it was a therapy for those women but it was a therapy for me because it helped me to understand more about where i came from and there's so many people with so much more courage to be able to open up really much more easily than me and i admire it and i always used to see it as being weak which is not the case because somebody that opens to you that kind of offers their heart is somebody that actually has the biggest strength ever right about now i'm starting to take that control and taking that control helped me to find what i was truly meant to do here and it was to help any woman that went through it any woman that went through a lot of deep painful traumatic experience because i used to use the clothes as a way to mask my feelings I used to use the clothes as a way to not saying I love you, not saying that I'm sad, not saying that I'm down, not saying that I need people. You know what I mean? That's how I used the clothes. It was my costume, it was a way to protect myself from the world. And a lot of women, we go through it. It doesn't have to be the clothes. But it could be an addiction. It could be something that you kind of always go back to because you want to get rid of that pain no matter what. And you distract yourself even more. But the problem and the issue here is that deep down, it's always gonna come back. That icky feeling you have, it came back strong for me a couple of years ago. It hit me hard. It's a battle every single day. Helping other women, honestly, is something that I truly, truly, truly love because to feel the shame. I know what it is to feel the pain without even being able to say it out loud. The more you're gonna keep it inside, the more it's gonna be painful for you because when you're gonna explode, it's gonna be the worst thing ever. You're gonna keep losing relationships. You're gonna keep not meeting the right people for you. You're never gonna be able to go towards what you truly meant to do here. And this moment, this confinement moment, helped me and taught me a lot about myself because I'm by myself and I need to battle my demons every single day. I don't have any distractions. Netflix is a good thing, but at some point you gotta stop the Netflix because at some point it's just gonna be well, you know? What else can you do? I'm not saying that I'm getting bored. I think the important part here is to really think it through what am I meant to do 
here on this planet. And I think that's the message that I wanted to convey to you today is that no matter what you went through, I want you to know you're gonna be fine. But it takes for you to ask yourself the tough questions. Your heart needs you. Your mind needs you. Your body needs you more than ever right now. You're trying to fight those demons right now and it's challenging and I know it. Talk to me. The coaching program that I'm offering now is nothing less than a side therapy. Nothing less. We had to spend so many years being scared, not being able to speak up. But the greatest accomplishment is to take it day by day. The shopping addiction that I had, the shopaholic in me, will never go away if I don't work it through. Because it has nothing to do with the clothes. Going from, let's say, a shopaholic to being minimalistic is a good thing. It could be a choice, it could be your decision. If you want to go to the minimalistic capsule world of any type of thing, it's good. It's even great. It makes you not waste time in the morning when you're ready. But it has to be a choice that you want to have. See my own journey happening here. You to help the best that I can, to support you the best I can. Because I know if I have it in me, you have it in you. It's not about being black. It's not about being white. It's not about being Asian. It's not about being big. It's not about being skinny. It's not about a body or a color. It's about your heart. It's about you. I really want to go beyond all of that because the most important thing is your heart, the most important thing is whatever is going on inside. It was a major step for me and like I said, I'm gonna open more. <laughs> you can follow the rest of my journey. Definitely subscribe to this channel to know more. What I want to bring to this channel is for you to feel good within your skin and feel good having the right clothes for you and for your style and using your style as a tool to empower you, as a tool to start your business, discover your gift. Use the tool of dressing up myself as me discovering what I meant to do and it helped me. You're not alone in that battle. And I think we could build something amazing. We can build a tribe, a community. You have the power, you have it in you. We have it all together, you know. Am I not? be the most connected person ever i have my ways get back to yourself and i think it's a great momentum for you so and any comment that you want to add up down below i'm here to listen and i'm here to answer and help you the best that i can actually the coaching program is just a reflection of my own story a reflection of what I went through and how I know it helped me and how I know it helped a lot other women and how I know it can help you. Especially when you don't know what is the angle you should take, what is the direction you should take, don't be scared. Right about now it's going to be a lot of inspiration and a lot of things that can help your mind and your style all at the same time because for me they're all linked together. Well, I hope you like hearing more about my story even if you don't know me and maybe it's the first video that you're watching from me know that everything that i do i do it with a lot of intention behind it i don't do it just because of the clothes i do it because it's my own story there's no shame here and this month there's gonna be a lot of uh, how to elevate your style and it's gonna be a series I'm gonna go really deep into uh, main styles in general the modern vintage and all the mindset behind it more about your own personality and if it's something that you want to breathe through your personal style much more so in a kind of personality here and the pieces that you may want to add to your closet if you want to go towards that direction obviously because it's a choice it's always a choice here but uh, i'm gonna start with everything that i grew up with so there's gonna be a french inspiration african inspiration and then the asian inspiration it's gonna be a point for you to add it in your own video presence because it's it's all about showcasing your personality here. Using your personal side as your best asset. That's why I'm a side coach, you know. I love it. I hope it was helpful. Like I said, ask all type of questions. Follow me on Instagram because on there you're gonna have a lot of confidence boost and a lot of inspiring things that I can say, share, or have my own videos on IGTV because I love videos, clearly. 
I'm gonna be able to open more bit by bit, step by step. So I was glad if you got to watch this video until the end. <laughs> I'm grateful for it and thank you for it. I shall see you for my next video and uh, like I say all the time, comme je l'ai dit toujours, j'espère que vous avez aimé la vidéo. C'était un petit peu plus une sorte de story time, mais c'est pas évident pour moi de partager tout ça, mais je pense que si ça peut aider quelqu'un, ça peut aider une seule âme. <rire> Ici, bah, ce sera ma plus grande joie en fait. Donc, euh, je vais vous revoir pour ma prochaine vidéo. Until then, I say it all the time, smile because it's free and contagious. Bye.